Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, as you can tell by the title, I wanted to go over some macrame basics and some things that I wish I had known when I started doing macrame and just giving you a little bit of insight on some of the basic knots that you should be using or that you probably will be using when you start doing macrame, whether that's keychains or wall hangings. In fact, actually let me know in the comments what you're looking to do with macrame, if it's for you, if you wanna start selling your own products, and then what you want to create. Do you want to create keychains? Are you trying to create plant hangers? Whatever it might be, but I definitely would love to know. So let me know in the comments. When I first started with my macrame endeavors, I was kind of nervous because I didn't want to waste rope. I didn't have a lot of money and I, I just wanted to have good quality rope or string in order to to make good quality pieces right and I, I looked at some sites and some websites it was so expensive it was like $40 for a decent size um, just macrame cord and I was overwhelmed and I felt frustrated because I'm like I don't have the money to do all of this but I, I want to want to start macrame and so my suggestion to you would be to just go on Amazon I'm sorry about my voice, I had a long meeting this morning, <clears throat> but anyways, uh, just go on Amazon and start looking at some cheaper macrame rope or cord. You can always, you know, get better materials as time goes on. I really, really like a company called Nook Theory and they're on Amazon, so definitely check them out. Um, they have pretty affordable prices and they have really pretty colors too in the macrame cord. So I wanted to mention, the difference between, you know, you'll hear macrame cord, string, rope, all of this stuff. So this is macrame rope. Rope is essentially when, oops, if I can get it to, there we go, focus. Rope is essentially when it's twisted, you have the ply, ply material on it. And then macrame string, it looks more like this. So yes, there's still all these fibers, but it's not twisted like the rope is. So hope that makes a little bit more sense. Um, but yeah, I kind of want to show you, well, I'm not going to kind of show you, I am going to show you, um, essentially the basic knots and then what you can make with each of those knots. So I'm going to go around my house and try to find some macrame wall hangings that I've done and point out which knots uh, you'll be seeing and you'll be using on there so that when you see a macrame piece, you can say, oh, okay, they used a large head knot and then the double half hitch. You'll understand this when the video is done, but I just wanted to give that little preview of everything beforehand. So let's go. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna work on is a lark's head knot. So I'm just folding this piece in half. And if you loop it over like this, and then you have a loop in the back, so you're just gonna pull it through just like that. That is a lark's head knot. I'll show you one more time. So you're gonna loop it over like this. And then I just take my pointer finger and my thumb and I loop that through. And then you always wanna make sure with the knots that they're they're nice and tight. Not Don't overdo it, but just make sure that they're secure. So that is the large set knot. The next knot I'm gonna teach you is called the square knot. And so you have four pieces here. You're going to take the one on the right and put it over the two in the middle. And then you're gonna take the one on the left and that is going over the right one. And then you wanna feed it through here, this loop from the back side. So put this one through the back, just like this. And we're gonna do the same thing, but the other way. So the left side will go over the middle two the right one is now gonna go over, back up and through that loop. Just like that, and that is your square knot. So I'll do it one more time. So the right one goes over the middle two, the left one goes over, back and through this loop. And then we do the same thing, but the other side. So left side goes over these two, the right side goes over the left one, and then back up and through that loop. 
So if you went down and continued like this, this is the square knot. I don't know how old y'all are, but as a millennial, I remember making these like paracord bracelets and this is actually the knot that is used for those and I didn't even realize it until I started doing macrame. The next knot is called the spiral knot. So it's similar to the square knot in the sense that you will do essentially the same thing. So right goes over the middle two, the left one will go over the right, back, and then through this loop. And instead of going, doing the same thing, but on the other side, we're gonna continue doing the same thing that we just did, right? So we're gonna go use the right, go over those two, and then the back one comes forward, and then back and around. And here we are starting the spiral. As you can see, it's starting to turn that way. So I'll show you a few more here. There we go. So as you can see, it's gonna start to spiral like that all the way around. And another thing you can do as well. So as you can see, the spiral is going this way. If you wanted the spiral to go the other way, then we would just do like that opposite version. So we'd use the left side first. Just like this. I hope you get a better idea. There we go. So as you can see, one side is going that way. Then when we switched it, it starts going that way, which can be useful depending on what type of design you want to make. The next knot I want to show you is called the diagonal double half hitch knot. And so I'm actually going to incorporate another one of these by doing a lark's head knot like we did before. Now we have three. Perfect. So now that we have three, I'll show you how to do the diagonal double half hitch knot. So we're gonna go down this way. So I'm gonna take this far left one. This is the one you are going to lead with. So this is your, your lead strand. Let me make sure this is, there we go. Okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna have the lead strand being held at the diagonal that you want. So if you want it up here, it's gonna go up there. If you want it here, here, whatever the diagonal is that's where you're going to want to hold this so i want to hold it about right here this looks like a good diagonal then you're going to take the next strand and it's going to go over and then feed through a loop so let me explain so when this goes over this is the second second strand there this will go over and then back through this loop that and then you're going to repeat and you always want to do it two times so now we're on to that third strand and you still want to keep that angle just like that over and through and I'm going to continue this all the way down Oops. See, and then I didn't even do it. Okay, number two. One. Two. One and two. And the reason why you do two of them instead of just one is it just secures it better. So as you can see, wherever I had that angle is where the diagonal was. So now we can do the same thing. Maybe we want the diagonal to go this way. So instead of having, you know, the side, the cord on the left, instead of having this and directing this way, we want to take the lead strand, which is now the far one on the right, and we are going to hold it the other way. So again, we're going to take that second strand right here, and it's going to go over and then through this loop. And then going that way just like that. So now we can see the diagonal starting to go this way. So again, taking the third one now, and this is gonna go up and through that loop. Just like that. So now you can see how you can alter and change what, you know, how far you want that diagonal to be, what kind of angle you want on there. So here in my office I have, this is the first larger macrame wall hanging I made. So if I get close here, you will see that I have the Lark's head knot. 
an alternating double half hitch. Oops, there we go. You can see that a little bit better. Um, I also have the spiral knot right here. And as you can see, the spirals go this way on the left side and they go this way on the right. Um, what else here? So obviously, again, double half hitch, the diagonal version of that right here. And I think that's about it for, for this one. But in order to get this fringe down here, <clears throat> so there are spaces right here with a little uh, bit of rope. So I just did two lark's head, lark's head knots on those. So that's how I got that fringe. All right, now let's try the vertical half hitch, double half hitch. What you saw before was the horizontal one and you saw the vertical one or the diagonal one excuse me and then the alternating double half hitch which is when it goes this way then that way it alternates so now i'm going to show you the vertical double half hitch so it's the same as those other double half hitches that we did so you're taking this one instead of holding it straight across for horizontal or doing a diagonal we want it to be vertical so we're going to hold this down and we're going to take that second one and do pretty much that same thing that we did last time, taking that second strand and you're going to go like this, except for this time, it's going to look like that. So we're going to basically work our way down, down this cord. So there's two and now instead of this one, we want to go over here. So this is now going to become your lead. So we're still using that other strand though, that second one. Oops. Going up like that and then going up. So you can see that now it is a vertical one and you have these longer lines here. And again, you wanted to do that next one just to show you and see how it looks a little funky sometimes it'll go vertical like that it's okay go ahead and manipulate these knots right you're the one that's in control of them they are not controlling you so that's how we do that one so this piece in my bedroom is made with the vertical double half hitch knot and that's how i did all of these i'll show you the just double half hitch knot in general it's not the diagonal um but just kind of going straight across so you're going to do the same thing essentially so this is going to be the left side the left strand we're going to take that as a lead and i'm going to have it go straight across this time instead of diagonal so again, you're gonna do that same thing. And this time we want these to be vertical like that. And I like using these after the Lark's Head Knot on a lot of my wall hangings. I just think it looks a lot more professional and it also just helps to secure the entire thing. Just like that. As you can see, it becomes a horizontal double half hitch knot there. But that can go all the way across, you know, your, your project that you're doing or whatever it may be. But that's what that looks like. So when you're finished with a project or maybe even if you're in the middle of one, depending on the pattern you're looking at, it may ask you for a gathering knot. Now what a gathering knot is, is this. So let's say these are the ones you want to put together. So what we're going to do is take another strand. I recommend having a smaller strand than this, but just for the sake of the video, I wanted to show you how you do it. So you take this strand and you're going to loop it like this. Hope you can see that. Let me make sure it is in focus for you. There we go. So this strand is over and this one is behind. Right, and you want to leave this little tail here. So what I'm going to do is basically just flopping that right on your project. And then you're going to take that long tail and you're just going to wrap it around. And as you wrap it, you want to make sure the next layer that you do is underneath that first one that you did. Just like this. And as you can see, this little loop is still there. That's good. We don't want to go over that loop or this will not work. Here we go. So let's just do, I'll do four just like this. 
and then you want to feed that through this little loop, that little tail that we made earlier. There we go. And we want this to be nice and tight. So this is when you're gonna take that tail that we left up here and you're gonna pull it. And what you wanna do is essentially just pull this knot through so it's kind of in the middle of this here. You don't wanna to pull too tight, otherwise it's gonna be really difficult for you to, to pull that through like I did. <laughs> so just make sure it's loose enough uh, to pull through. But you don't want this loop to be pulled all the way out. You just want it, this little knot that you made to be pulled until it's about in the middle of that. Once you're done with that, you're then going to clip the tails, this one and that one, and then you'll be left with something that looks similar to this. And that will be your gathering knot. Okay, so as you can see, I have a couple macrame uh, hat hangers that I have. So for this one, if I go closer here, you can see the lark's head knot on top and then the diagonal double half hitch. And then I just put a bead inside and then went from there. And then on the side here, that is a square knot. And as you go down, you can see that this is a gathering knot. So this beauty in my living room took forever, but if I, it's really tall so I can't get super close, but as you can see up here, I started with a lark's head knot, went into the square knot, and then this long line that goes across there, that's the horizontal double half hitch. Then we have the diagonal double half hitches, spiral knot, and it goes down like that. And then I do have a square knot right there. Right now it is time for me to show you the berry knot. So if you remember the square knot from earlier, we're basically going to do that and then we're going to fold it in on itself. So don't, don't worry, don't get scared. We're going to do a square knot again. So it's going to be the right side over the middle two. And then we're taking the left that goes over the right, back and through that loop. Perfect, and I'm gonna leave a little bit of a space up here, just like that. And then we're gonna do the same thing, but on the other side. So the left side is going to go over the middle two. And now your right strand is gonna go over the left, back and through. And I'm gonna pull that, and we're gonna do a few more of those. And don't worry if you're not super quick at this, you don't need to be right away. All of this is just a learning process, right? And the cool thing about macrame and crochet and pretty much any fiber art is that you get to just practice and work on things until you kind of figure out what you like and it kind of just works out. So now I have this. I'm going to do actually a couple more, I think. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, we're gonna do that. So you see these little kind of lumps on the side here. I like to count them. So one, two, three, one, two, three. So now what I'm gonna do is take all of these pieces and we are going to feed them through that space that we left up here. Just like this. And now you have the berry knot that looks like this from the side, but from the front, it kind of just looks like a little bubble. So what you're going to do now is you're going to make sure that this doesn't slide down. We want to secure it and we're going to secure it with one square knot. Just like this, pull it up there and that is secure. Uh, something else that I like to add in here too, it's not a knot, but it's a four strand braid. So instead of taking three and doing your normal braid, Oops, just like this, we're gonna use four strands. So I just wanted to kind of add this little bonus, I guess, and show you how to do it with four. So it's essentially just weaving things in and out. So we're gonna start with this right side and go over, under, over, and pull it a little bit tight. And it's the same thing with this one then. We want this, I guess, second one here to go over this one and under that first, just like this. So it looks a little funny starting out, but bear with me here. 
So now that you have that, you're going to take this left one here and you're going to go under, over, under, just like that. And then do it again, under, over, under, and just keep going on that way. But I really like how, how this braid looks. I just think it's really, it's really pretty and it's really easy to do. So over, under, under, over, under. So I don't know if that was helpful, but again, I really like the four stranded braid. I think it looks pretty in a lot of macrame pieces as well. And yeah, there you go. Macrame and any other creative endeavor that you do, it, it takes time and it takes a lot of experimentation. And when you're starting, it can be really frustrated. I know when I started crocheting and macrame, doing all of these things, I got so frustrated starting out because I'm just like, it doesn't look like this. I'm skipping stitches. I'm doing the knots wrong. And I got frustrated, but I came back to it a few times and for some reason it just clicks. There'll be some time when you come back to this project that is the bane of your existence, you'll look at it, you'll try again, and you're like, oh, all right, I get it now. And that's like such a good feeling because you know, hey, now I can learn more, progress to this next level, or hey, I'm just gonna continue to do this and create as many wall hangings or whatever it is you wanna create. Uh, what millimeter cord you're working with, that's also important because you don't want to work with a five millimeter cord and a three millimeter cord trying to make knots because it's gonna it's gonna look a little funky and get weird because they're not the same size. Now the size of cord of the cord and string is going to depend on the size of your project and just the overall aesthetic you're looking for. If you're making a really small project and you're using bigger thicker millimeter cord and string then it's not going to take as long but it's also going to look chunkier and vice versa maybe there's a wall hanging that you want to do that is going to be really intricate and detailed and you're thinking hmm, all right oh, i'm gonna try it with this three millimeter macrame rope you know whatever you want to do but when i first started it is hard because it's like some of these knots were the bane of my existence i got really frustrated but all i can say is whatever craft whatever you're doing any kind of endeavor if you get frustrated with it it's not fun anymore right and then you leave you might not come back so the second you find yourself getting frustrated with these things just leave leave for a few minutes go for a walk come back after a while after a day and try again because at some point I promise you it'll just click and it'll feel so good when that happens and that's when you start to actually start creating the things you want to I know this is random but I also wanted to add this in there and if you haven't heard it today or this week or this month I want you to know that I am proud of you for trying something new for starting a new trait a new craft because Sometimes it's not easy and sometimes we do it because we're super creative people. Sometimes we do it because we're just trying to learn a new skill and get away from our day to day. So just know I'm proud of you. Keep going and I'm so excited to see what you create. I hope this helped. If you want to see more videos, definitely let me know in the comments below and I would really appreciate it if you subscribed to my channel. My overall goal, I just want everybody to know, like I would love to make YouTube a full-time thing. You know, actually helping creatives learn how to do all of these macrame pieces and crocheting and helping them with small businesses too, right? A lot of you want to, you know, learn a new skill and turn that into a business and start selling your wall hangings or for some of my other people, they want to sell some of their crocheted pieces. And so I really, really have a passion for helping other creatives learn how to make a living with their craft. So again, subscribe if that's something you're into and I will see you in the next one. So we'll just end it. Might leave it in. Probably, probably not. All right, bye.